Good Manufacturing Practices, GMP, are a set of procedures that ensure hygienic food processing procedures and constitute a prerequisite for the implementation of HACCP. The GMP must be documented and requires periodic verification. The general principles of food hygiene are applicable to all food processing steps, from primary production to the consumer, and establish the conditions of hygiene required for the production of safe foods. We will now consider the most important aspects of good manufacturing practices for food handling. The water that comes in contact with food or with surfaces that will further come in contact with it must be potable, of satisfactory sanitary quality, and obtained from a safe source. An important aspect of the operation in the processing of any food must be the safety of water. A complete GMP plan must take account the sources and treatment of the water that comes into contact with foods or is used to produce ice. The water used to produce foods must also be potable. This applies equally to ice and steam coming in contact with foods. The water and its source reservoir must be analyzed for quality at least every six months. To be considered potable, the water must meet the standards established in the latest edition of the World Health Organization standards, which establish the quality standards for potable water. Lavatories must be provided for personnel to allow the maintenance of an appropriate level of personal hygiene and prevent food contamination. A food processing plant must be fitted with appropriate facilities for natural or mechanical ventilation so as to minimize food contamination from air tainted by, for example, aerosols and condensation droplets, control the environmental temperature, remove odors that may affect food safety, and, where necessary, control the humidity to ensure food safety. Ventilation systems must be designed and built in such a way to prevent airflow from contaminated areas into processing areas. Natural or artificial lighting must be provided to permit hygienic work. Where necessary, lighting must not be such as to alter colors. Intensity must be suited to the nature of the operations. Where appropriate, bulbs and lamps that hang from the ceiling must be shielded to avoid contamination in case of breakage. Storage of raw materials, ingredients, and other products used in food processing must be such as to permit adequate maintenance and cleaning, prevent the entry of pests and the construction of nests, permit effective protection from contamination during storage, and provide an environment that minimizes food spoilage. The purpose of controlling the operations is to produce foods that are safe for human consumption. This can be accomplished by developing operational requirements for products and the raw materials, composition, processing, and distribution, and for their use by the consumer. These requirements will be applied to the production and handling of foods. In addition, control systems must be designed, implemented, and monitored, and their effectiveness reviewed. Improper temperature control in food processing is one of the most common causes of foodborne diseases and early food spoilage. Among these controls are those on cooking, cooling, processing, and storage times and temperatures. Temperature control systems must take into account the nature of the food, that is, its water activity, pH, 
and possible types and initial microbial load. The shelf life intended for the product, processing and packaging methods, and how the product is to be consumed, that is, whether it needs further cooking or is ready to eat. The variation tolerances for time and temperature must be specified. Temperature records must be checked at regular intervals and evaluated for accuracy. Pathogenic microorganisms can be transferred from food to food either by direct contact, the food handlers, the contact surfaces, or the air. Raw and unprocessed foods must be separated, physically or in work stages, from ready-to-eat foods, and effective cleaning and sanitation provided between those stages. Access to processing areas must be restricted and controlled. Employees must wear clean uniforms, including shoes, and must wash their hands before entering these areas. Surfaces, tools, equipment, accessories, and furniture must be thoroughly cleaned and disinfected after contact with raw foods, especially those of animal origin. The prevention of food hazards begins with the inspection of raw material. Acceptance of materials must be such as to ensure that no raw product or ingredient is accepted that contains parasites, undesirable microorganisms, pesticides, veterinary or toxic drugs, or foreign substances that cannot be reduced to acceptable levels by separation or in normal processing. Packaging must ensure adequate protection of the product to minimize contamination and prevent damage and must provide adequate space for the label. All products must be accompanied by information to guarantee that they are handled, stored, processed, prepared, and displayed in an appropriate manner and to permit easy identification of the lot and, if necessary, its recall. Commercial products must be traceable both within or outside the plant. Internal tracing is done in the course of the processing and external tracing takes place when the product has already been released on the market or into the distribution system. Recalling products may be necessary to protect public health. After recalled, the food items may be reprocessed or destroyed, depending on the problem detected. Pests, including birds, Many flying and crawling insect species, such as cockroaches, beetles, flies, and moths, in addition to dogs, cats, and different species of rodents. The presence of pests in a food processing plant can cause diseases in consumers through microbial contamination carried out by them. Integrated pest control consists of four elements. Prevention of access, prevention of nesting, eradication, and monitoring. Pest infestation can arise where there are suitable nesting sites and available food. It is important to evaluate how well the establishment is able to keep pests out. Premises must be kept clean indoors and out. Foods are very often contaminated by the very persons who gather, handle, store, transport, process, and prepare them. Any handler can transfer pathogens to any kind of food. This may be prevented, however, by proper personal hygiene, behavior, and handling practices. Persons who are ill, show symptoms of illness, or are carriers of foodborne diseases must be kept away from food processing areas if there is any probability of their contaminating the products. Employees with cuts or wounds must not handle foods, 
or surfaces that come into contact with foods unless the injury is completely shielded by a waterproof dressing. Food handlers must adhere to an appropriate standard of personal cleanliness and use protective uniforms or apparel and suitable covers on their hair and shoes to avert contamination of foods and of surfaces that come into contact with them. Hands must be washed with soap in flowing warm water and scrubbed thoroughly for at least 15 seconds. They must be rinsed in warm water and dried in white paper towels or under hot air. Foods must be appropriately protected during transportation. The type of vehicle or container required depends on the nature of the food and on the conditions in which they must be transported. Vehicles must be designed and built so that they will not contaminate the food or its packaging, and so that they could be cleaned and sanitized when necessary. Vehicles used for the transportation of food must be kept in a satisfactory state of cleanliness and maintenance. Food processing establishments must conduct courses on personal hygiene and food hygiene for their employees. This training must be evaluated periodically to determine the need for reinforcement. Persons involved in food processing must be trained in good manufacturing practices, or GMP, and made aware of their importance. All personnel must be aware of their particular roles in and responsibility for the protection of food from pathogens and spoilage microorganisms. Handlers must have the necessary knowledge and enough experience for hygienic handling of food. The marketing of foods, too, must be based on good manufacturing practices, that is, practices that protect food from contamination. Food must be presented in ways that meet the requirements in regard to temperature, stacking, and the time that each food, whether packaged or not, may be displayed. The kitchens of restaurants, dining halls, hospitals, catering services, and street vendors must adopt good manufacturing practices with a view to the foods they prepare and the customers they serve. The principal, but not the only controls in food service, are those of time and temperature in food preparation and the prevention of cross-contamination. Outbreaks of foodborne diseases in kitchens are generally traceable to failings in one or both of these two controls. Verification of good manufacturing practices is a systematic activity carried on to evaluate the effectiveness with which GMP principles and practices are implemented and maintained. Adherence to GMP must be verified periodically or when changes are made in the process, the product, the packaging materials, or in other aspects that affect the final product. Good manufacturing practices are an indispensable tool in the production of safe foods and must be applied responsibly at all stages of the food production process so that foods will be sources not of disease but of strength and vitality.